All right, fellas, back here with you guys, at least most of you guys, first time I've seen you in a while. Some of you, hopefully you bear at penalties this time around. Now, Western Suburbs, early stages of the Chatham Cup, but like, we beat them with 10 men last time, okay? So just make sure we keep 11 players on the field and we should be okay. Let's get to train, boys. Whoa, that's that's a lot of players we've got. What what what's happened? Trialists. Oh, it's all the trialists, right? Yeah. Jeez, that that is a lot of trialists. How we get off getting that many here? Jeepers creepers. Hello everyone and welcome to episode number 150 of the New Zealand Builder Nation here on Sean Does FM with both the Whites and Cash Me Technical. I hope you're doing well and come out today. We are back from the World Cup. Unfortunately, not the E World Cup of Football Manager. That would have been quite nice New Zealand football. We could have actually had someone at a World Cup for once. No, instead, we are back from the 2038 World Cup and back at Cash Me Technical for a third round clash in the Chatham Cup to take on Western Suburbs, a big clash this early on in the competition. So looking forward to that as well as an update on what's been happening in the brief time we've been away from the World Cup as well as well we've been there at Kashmir Tech. Then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video. And if you haven't done so already and are enjoying the series here on the channel, also make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn that notification bell on as well. It is greatly appreciated. But yesterday, unfortunately, our journey at the World Cup did come to an end in the round of 16. We got beaten by the number one team in the world in Brazil in a penalty shootout. So if you missed that one, I'll leave a link to it over in the top right corner. Quick update on what's been happening at that World Cup before we go into Kashmir Tech mode for the rest of this one. And we are now up to the point where most of the quarterfinals have been played. So you can see there, there's our two-all draw with Brazil. Yay! They got past Norway after extra time today. Uh, having a really good tournament. Spain beat early. England just got past France. Big game that. Ecuador freshed Egypt. Australia, they went further than us off the back of a 4-1 win over Ukraine. So they're probably going to end up higher ranked than us off the back of this tournament, even though they don't have the soccer issues. Germany got past Switzerland 2-0. And the closest outside the one that we played was Belgium versus Argentina. The RGs getting up in a penalty shootout. So those were the teams that made their way through to the final eight. So to be fair, not bad company. Some of the teams that have gone out alongside there in the likes of Italy, France, and Belgium, as well as the likes of Switzerland as well. Now going forward to the quarterfinals, Brazil, that's where they got knocked out. The defending champions, England, did them 1-0 in Soweto. You've got Spain there who fresh the UAE so far. They're looking very good, Spain, I'd say, to take out this World Cup 4-0 win for those guys. Ecuador and Argentina are yet to play that one might be coming up today in game about the same time that we play this Chatham Cup tie. And Australia did eventually get knocked out, but only thanks to a 1-0 loss to Germany. So currently, we've got Germany, Spain, and England going through to the final four. You'd imagine Argentina would beat Ecuador in the other quarterfinals. That's what's been happening in the week or so since we have departed that World Cup over there in South Africa. But now it's time for us to switch over into Kashmir Tech mode for the first time in about a week. Now, first up, there hasn't been too much going on on the field. Of course, last time you saw us with Kashmir Tech was the Champions League final. We won that on penalties, unlike what happened at the World Cup. A couple of Southern League games off the back of that. We beat Parklands and Nelson 4-0 in both those games in the first two rounds of the Chatham Cup. And again, kept clean sheets there. 5-0 over Timaru Fissil. And the day before the World Cup started, I think I brought this up briefly before we played that first game, which was against Israel a 3-0 win up in North Wellington since then. It's been about a month, but thankfully my assistant did schedule a friendly while we were at the World Cup, and we picked up a 7-0 win over the Turtles. So hopefully that will help some of our guys get some extra fitness, but unfortunately we did pick up an injury in that friendly while Carly, our star right winger here these days at Kashmir Tech. He is out for six days to three weeks with some sprained ankle ligaments. So he's definitely out for this game. In today's episode, also missing, if we go over to the medical centre, is our backup goalkeeper, Mariano Marquez. Now, he is a new signing, actually, here at Kashmir Tech. A bit more promising than the American and Logans. So that's the reason that we bought him in. 19 years old, non-contract, decent current ability and potential. But we can't use him in this cup game. Going to be David Sifuentes. 
because he, I'm pretty sure, broke his arm. In fact, no, fractured lower arm, and that was in the B team game. He's out for three to five weeks. That only happening a couple of days ago against, of all teams, the Wellington Phoenix Fourths, because for some reason, they're in the second tier of the Southern League. So those are our injuries going into this one. Also, we do have a suspension, and that is to Marco Corona. He, of course, the backup to Louis Evans. Thankfully, all our all-whites are available for this game, having been a week or so since we did take on Brazil at the World Cup. But Corona suspended for this one, so that Evans definitely has to get for a full shift in this game. But thankfully, just one injury that's going to affect our usual first teamer at Kashmir Tech, going to what could be a quite big early tie here in the Chatham Cup. Considering we take on Western Suburbs, just got past them in that OFC Champions League final last week, albeit we did get a pretty early red card in that game, and they still couldn't beat us. They had to go to penalty. So I'm like to think if we can keep everyone on the field, we should be okay here. Hopefully, at least that will be the case. And also, a quick update on some transfer stuff before we do get stuck in to this game as well, because you can see there that Pedro Alvarado might be on his way to a random club for free. He's a right winger down in our B team. He just isn't as good as I thought he'd be after we got him on a free from Sport Boys in Peru. So no loss there, but going over the transfer history and sorting this one out by the most recent arrivals, we have let go of a first team player. It's our backup goalkeeper. I said it before, Alexander Logan. This one did make sense. He is gone as a backup to the Wellington Phoenix. So that's the reason that we did bring in Marquez he wasn't quite as good, I thought, and also being quite a bit older, thought the younger option might be handy, especially in cup games that we can rotate, and especially because he would count as one of our under-20 players. Didn't play too much for us here, but Alexander Logan at Kashmir Tech. So getting 11.75k for him, not too bad, and it keeps him in the country just in case one day he does want to switch his allegiances to New Zealand instead of America. Of course, though, he is getting selected in the squads for the American national team, despite not being capped at senior level. Yet, and also have signed one more player at Kashmir Tech, Matthias Moran, who is a pretty solid midfielder who can play both defensively and further forward. To be fair, he's in the under 20s. I thought he had more potential, but his current ability, not too bad. So, we have snapped him up as well, just for a little bit of extra squad depth. And then going down to the development center. And we've got tons of players here currently in the development centre at Kashmir Tech. We'll sort this out by when the contract expires. We have got an absolute trial farm here currently. Look at all these players who, for the most part, have just been released from clubs in the Bundesliga, League R, Premier League, or the League. Unfortunately, haven't got City R loaded for the saves. So couldn't do that. But anyone under a certain age who was let go on a free and has not been picked up, has made their way here to Kashmir Tech. Some very handy players indeed that hopefully we can get our hands on for the remainder of the save. It's too late for it to affect us for the next World Cup, which as I said, probably will be the last one with the all-whites in the save that we manage. But it could help us out for things like the Club World Cup and also some quite handy local players down here as well, in particular Prince Kamalo, who wasn't too far away from actually making that all-white squad, I think, these days. He's the fourth-choice striker, definitely someone that we could sign going into the remainder of this season. Also, in the under-20s, some handy, promising prospects as well, albeit, for the most part, not quite as good as those ones who are in our B-team squads. But currently, a fair bit of trial farm hoarding going on here at Kashmir Tech, but hopefully that will help us really improve the squad, considering if that next proper World Cup is our last one with the all-whites, the next one, which is the Club World Cup with Kashmir Tech, also likely to be our last one of those as well. Bit of a shame these days that it's every four years. And of course, Auckland City kind of screwed us out of a spot the first time I thought that we should be going. But hopefully we can get in a fair bunch of foreigners and that should make us quite competitive at that next Club World Cup, even though we didn't do too badly last year, making our way into the knockouts. But I think that covers everything going in to today's episode. And hopefully we can end off the week on a high note and beat Western Suburbs yet again, this time in the Chatham Cup. And here are the team sheets for this third round clash in the Chatham Cup. First up, Western Suburbs, they are at home here. It's again just like flat Champions League final. And again, are going with the 4 3 3. We're pretty close to our best 11. Obviously, Mazzino in there for Khalid at right wing. And also, we've got Sousa, the Brazilian left back in there, who, of course, we signed during the Champions League. Berlin Diop 
these days. We can actually play them now that we're out of that Champions League competition with registration. We'll switch this back to Director Cam after that shootout yesterday and hopefully pick up a win to continue in the Chatham Cup. And just right at the 15 minute mark here, first tight of this game. And it looks like it's going to be a corner here in our favour. Mazzino will try and put this one into the mixer. I think that's headed away there. It goes out to Clark though, puts that one into the mixer. Zoomers got a good touch on that there. Did Prajaza in goal for Western Suburbs. But thankfully, still found its way in off the inside of the post. And easy use of Zoomers, who was in the wider Australian squad for the World Cup, but didn't actually go. He got cut just before the tournament, but he scores our first goal here in this one, and thankfully off to a good start. Hopefully this time we don't concede and then get a red card, but we won the lap early. And it's been pretty quiet off the back of that opening goal, but going forward, about to make our way into the last 10 minutes of this half, and there is a free kick here in our favour. We take it short, and Evans will pump that one deep. Unfortunately, couldn't find a teammate there, though. Devlin can get back on the ball there, but good way from Sousa, just controls that one under a little bit of pressure. Does the Brazilian left back, the one new addition to our usual first choice, Liam Eric Cashmere Tech, off the back of that Champions League, which we did wrap up last week. Now we try and do something there. Mazzino had a lot of space on the right-hand side for some reason. Looked to loop that one over the keeper into the top left corner. Unfortunately, a bit too much on that one. So still 1-0, but shortly off the back of that, do have a throw in here inside the final third. And Zoomers gets pushed in the back there. I thought it was the centre back, but apparently it was Devlin because the other guy was going off there. Must have been his teammate, but clear pushing the back of his Zoomers. Looking here for a double. Inside the first half, sends Pedraza there the wrong way. Buries it in the top right corner. If only we had him on penalties instead of Josh Pickering with the all whites yesterday. Obviously not possible because he's still an Australian and he'll probably break our hearts when he does become eligible for the all whites. But Ezra Zoomers here having a good first half in this third round clash in the Chatham Cup. As you can see, we're not actually getting that many more shots off here than Western Suburbs are, but thankfully, three of them on target, and obviously one from the penalty spot makes things a bit easier for us, but Zoomers, he's on a hat trick, and we turn up here at halftime, hopefully, can really put these guys to the sword in the second half, and knock them out early in the Chatham Cup. And just like at the end of the first half, we've got another throw in here inside of the final third, very early stages here of the second half. Again, the ball gets played back there to Debenham, but now we find Mazzino there through Louis Evans. Lovely effort that, in fact, it's Sam Clark, who will find him for a second assist in this game. And Mazzino doing a good job here coming in for the injured way leg car leader. Buries that one, that's 3-0, and that really should put this to bed. So here's what we can do. We've got 11 players on the field against Western Suburbs here at Kashmir Tech. Be fair, not too sure if this is their first choice 11 with this being a cup game, but we are putting them to the sword. 3-0 early in the second half. And we've made our way up to the hour mark in this game, and I think it's a good time for us here to make just a couple of substitutions. Louis Evans is on a little bit of a deep yellow heart, obviously off the back of the World Cup. The only player here at Kashmir Tech who was actually staying games regularly during that tournament. We'll take him off. We'll bring on Phil Wilson. He can play centre back. We'll pull Ho South for Ford Singh as he does need to be on the field being an under-20 player, and also Chris Greenidge still coming back from injury. We might give him rest as well, just make sure we don't break him. So to Hotman de Villiers can come on for him. A couple of subs there with a half hour left and a 3-0 lead. And then a couple of minutes on from those subs that we did make a highlight there where Western Suburbs were briefly on the attack, but good there. I think that was from Sousa at left back to get that ball back for us, and now we try and make our way out from that. Going to be interesting here to see how the youngster Phil Wilson does get on at centre back instead of his more natural right back with a 3-0 lead. We should be okay, even if we do concede the goal. But nice ball over the top there from Janssen for Ezra Zoomers on a hat trick. Wonderful curving effort into the top right corner. Ezra Zoomers with a hat trick. Hopefully, that's a sign of things to come here at Kashmir Tech. Because the beef fear before the World Cup, I think our strikers were a little bit streaky with their form for the most part. They were struggling for goals just a little bit. But that is a very good performance from Ezra Zoomers. He completes a hat trick. And that definitely should wrap this up 4-0 with 25 minutes left. And just about to make our way into the last 15 minutes of this game, and it's time for us here to make our final sub left back. Seuss has gone down to Red Hearts. A PA can come on for him, the Greek Australian. Let's just see what else happens here in the latter stages of this game, but definitely going through to the fourth round of this competition. We'll be interested to see if Auckland City are still in it, because I'm pretty sure they have Manurewa, and they're doing a pretty good job in the Northern League. We'll check on that off the bat of this game, all the sub-leagues here in New Zealand, because there might have been a bit of stuff going on there while we were away at the World Cup. Western Suburbs here on the attack, but good tackle from us there 
down that right hand side. Sifuentes punches that one clear, so actually a chance here for Weston to do something on the counter attack. Devlin squeezes that one nicely for Simmons, but thankfully he's on an orange injury and skies that one worse than an English player from the penalty spot. Make our way into extra time. That was quick, that's what she said. And we pick up in the end a very comfortable 4 0 win there over Western Suburbs. A bit easier than what I thought that was going to be, considering how the Champions League final was last week. But to be fair, this time kept all our players on the field. Looking at you, Louis Evans, and a hat trick to Ezra Zoomers means we go through to the fourth round. So, a very good win for us there in our first game back from the World Cup with Kashmir. Technical here, all the other results from the third round of the Chatham Cup here in New Zealand, quite notably, Wellington Olympic, Christchurch United, they've gone through just going down a bit further, nothing too surprising, and I suppose it's not that surprising at this point, but all consider they're quite rubbish these days, they get knocked out on penalties by Manurewa, so this could be a pretty easy Chatham Cup for us to win here this season at Kashmir Tech, fingers crossed that we've made our way through to the fourth round of EFI, that game's only in a couple of days' time, but it should be pretty easy work because we take on Palmerston North United, who, if you're wondering, are on top of the second tier of the Central League. So that should be quite easy work. Might even be a chance for us to use some rotation players. So I don't think we'll show you guys that one in today's episode. Might just skip forward and get through the rest of the Southern League season before we come back for the start of next week. But before we do wrap things up, I'm going to just check in quickly on what's going on in all the various leagues here in New Zealand. If you're wondering, that's what the Southern League looks like. It's a bit skewed because we've only played seven games. The likes of Otago, Nelson and Coastal haven't got that many left in the season, but we're only four points behind Otago. We should definitely be winning that Southern League yet again. But to be fair, Otago Uni are looking quite good to actually qualify for the National League going up to the Central League. Have Lock North on top but only one point clear of Western Suburbs with a game in hand. And joined on points with them are Napier City Rovers and Wellington Olympics. So that is a good four-horse race there for qualification for the National League, those three spots there in the Central League. And the Northern League, Auckland City are not having a good season. As you can see, they're all the way down in seventh. You know, a fair bit of work to do as well in the second half of the Northern League season if they want to make their way into the top four. Munro were on top. By a couple of points, East Coast Bays, Manukau United and Auckland United all currently pretty safely in those top four spots. So that's what's been going on in all the leagues here in New Zealand while we've been away at the World Cup. Auckland City definitely the surprise package there in trouble these days. A bit of a fallen giant here in New Zealand. If you enjoyed that one today, a bit of a catch up on life in New Zealand and also a win there over Western Suburbs in the Chatham Cup third round. Then do remember... To go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video. And if you haven't done so already and are enjoying the series here on the channel, also make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn that notification bell on as well. We'll just check quickly if there was a result from that clash at the World Cup as well. And there might have been, because Argentina are in the quarters 1-0 over Ecuador. So be fair, a bit closer than you might anticipate. But as expected, those are the final four. England take on Germany and Spain take on Argentina, I think the winner might come from that Spain-Argentina game, because England finished third in their group, so I don't know if they're actually that good or bad as FM, that could change when they want it to, Germany might be in trouble there in Spain-Argentina, I still like Spain to win it this year, based on their performance throughout the tournament, but Argentina are pretty blimmin' good, but that will do it for today's episode. We'll come back next week, recap what's happened in the semis and the finals, and also do something with Kashmir Tech once we make our way to an interesting game. So until then, thank you very much for watching. Keep on keeping on, and I'll see you then. Cheers.